Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna answer the question you've all been asking, how's this gonna bolt together? Okay, so all the stuff I'm using was never really made to go together. It's come from all kinds of different stuff and it's my job to figure out how to make it all work and how to make it all bolt together. Now, by the end of this video, you're gonna see all this stuff bolted together, the first mock-up to see how the bell housing, transmission and transfer case is all gonna come together. Now obviously this is going to take a bunch of adapters. There's other ways to do it, but this is the way that made the most sense to me. Okay, so first let's just go back over some stuff real quick. I'm using a Ford T18. Jeep and Scout also had a T18. None of them really cross over. They're kind of their own transmissions, even though they're the same model. You could get a stock T18 Dana 20 in both a Scout or a Jeep. The Ford transmission I'm using is a two-wheel drive transmission, which kind of threw some of y'all, but to be honest, I think there's more advantages to using the two-wheel drive case than a four-wheel drive case. There's not really any differences when it comes to adapting the two. And honestly, if you have a four-wheel drive T18 case for a Ford truck, you're probably better off to sell that, pocket the extra money, buy yourself a two-wheel drive case. One more important thing to note, the T18 never came behind an F-head, the T98. The transmission that came before the T18, it did, but that is also extremely rare. Now with all that said, we know we need something to adapt the transmission to the transfer case, and we need something to adapt the transmission to the F-head engine. Now let me show y'all what I've come up with. First thing I wanna talk about is transmission to transfer case. This will probably be the easiest part. Now I've got some kinda hard to find adapters right here, but Novak or Advanced Adapters, they both sell an off the shelf kit that you can adapt a T18 to a Dana 18 or 20 whenever you want to. But what I got here, this is a factory T18 to Dana 20 adapter out of a Jeep. It took me forever to find this thing. I've probably been looking at least two years and I finally hunted this one up on Marketplace. Right behind it, you'll see is very similar. It's got the Texas bolt pattern. That's what they call the Dana 18 and Dana 20 transfer case bolt pattern because it kind of looks like the state of Texas. You can see it's a little different though. It doesn't have quite as much material. It's missing this mountain surface down here. But this one came out of a Jeep and this one came out of a Scout. The outside diameter of both of these is exactly the same. That's what's gonna locate this inside your transfer case. If we flip it over, maybe this looks familiar from the transmission teardown video because it's the exact same as the rear bearing retainer we took off of the T18 case. So having this right here, that's what's gonna locate this to the back of the transmission. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you all this real quick so you know what I'm talking about. I'll be using the Jeep adapter for this example, but like I said, it's got the same cutout that that rear bearing retainer had in it. So I've got the rear output bearing back in the case. It's just a slip fit, but this right here is gonna locate right on top of that bearing. And that's how we're gonna set up this adapter on the back of the transmission. Now, I do have to drill and tap these six holes. There's four here, I think they're three eighths, and then these two are seven sixteenths. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Now, this is the infamous Dana 18 transfer case. Now, it's gonna get its own video because there's a lot to be said about it, but this is that Texas pattern I was talking about. So keep in mind, this is the adapter on the back of the transmission. So this surface will flip over like that and mount right here. The OD right here, that's what's gonna locate the transfer case onto this adapter. And you can see with that, all the holes in this already work because a Dana 20 and a Dana 18 are the exact same bolt pattern. Now, like I said, these are both factory equipment. You can find these in Jeeps, you can find these in Scouts. Something to be aware of though, is the clocking is slightly different between the two. So you can see they both have that exact same Texas pattern, but be aware of where this hole and this hole is at. Because you can see them right here, they're about the same, but on a Jeep, they're gonna be straight across, whereas on a Scout, they're kind of at an angle. Now what that means is that with the Scout adapter, it's gonna clock your transfer case lower down than it will with the Jeep adapter. I think the Scout might also have something to do with the drive lines, but I'm not 100% sure about the reasons that Scout did that. Just be aware that when you're looking for one of these adapters, you want the Jeep one. Now, if you do find a T18 Dana 20 combo out of a Jeep for the right price, I wouldn't pay more than maybe three or 400 bucks 
because you can buy the complete adapter kit from Novak anytime for like, I want to say it's around $500. So that takes care of the transfer case tied. Now let's talk about the engine side. Well, lined up here are three different input shafts. This is the one we just took out of the T18. This is a T90. And this is a custom T18 input shaft. Now, the more custom you make things, the more confusing it kind of gets. And I like the idea of keeping as many stock parts as I can to make this thing still work. So what I've done here, this actually came out of a Jeep J truck, a T18. And it was quite a bit longer when I first got it. We probably cut maybe three or four inches off of it. These input shafts are a lot longer than what you would find in like a CJ or a Ford T18. It was something to do with like clearing the dash to push the transmission a little farther backwards. But what I've done here though, I had it machined down to the same diameter as a stock T90. Then with a bunch of different measuring and stuff, I came up with what the exact stick out length will be on a T18 equivalent to a T90. Now you can see here, this one's taller than the T90, but once it's all bolted together, this should be the same stick out length as what this is in a stock Jeep. And then obviously once I turned it down, I sent it off and had it re-splined by Moser and they did an awesome job. Going this route, what that means is I get to use the Willys clutch, the Willys pilot bearing, and the Willys throwout bearing. And that's a great segue into this. Now this is the front bearing retainer. The one we took off of the T18 looks like this right here. This little aluminum piece here I had machined and that matches that bearing retainer just like we found in that right there. This right here though, is a stock T90 bearing retainer. And what this does, it means we get to use the stock clutch fork and set up like it's already in our Willys Jeep. And this is the throwout bearing that comes in the Willys Jeep. So right here, this solved my problem. I get to keep the same clutch, same throwout bearing, same pilot bearing. And essentially what I've done here is I've made the front of the T18 look just like a T90. Now obviously we can't use the two wheel drive main shaft. That's not gonna work with our transfer case. There is a special main shaft you've got to get to work with this transmission transfer case combination. And the Scout and the Jeep both did come with this special main shaft. That's what I'm getting at. If you can find a good deal on a used one, even if it's a four to one, you can still use the adapter and you can still use this main shaft. The final piece to the puzzle is the bell housing. Now this is just a stock F head bell housing. And all I've done, I've had this modified. I had this whole board out. This is the register for that front bearing retainer. You've got to open it up to the same diameter as what the T18 was. That's where this little aluminum adapter comes in at. It's the same diameter as this right here. And that's what our bell housing is going to locate on on our transmission. Here's a better look at what that little bearing retainer adapter looks like. So it locates on that front input bearing. And then the final modification that we got to do to make the swap work is mounting this bell housing to this transmission. Now, there's really two different ways I've seen people do this. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna transfer punch these holes right here. These are the stock mountain holes that go to the T90. I'm gonna drill and tap the T18 case, and then it'll bolt from this side into the case. And you can see our bearing retainer does its job and perfectly locates our bell housing where it needs to be at. So the only job I really have here is I need to make sure that this is exactly rotated where it needs to be. Same thing with the transfer case adapter plate. When I drill and tap those holes, I need to make sure that thing is perfectly parallel, exactly where it needs to be in rotation before I drill and tap them holes. Because if you mess up these holes, I really don't know how you're gonna fix it. I know I just threw a bunch of information at y'all, but when you sit down and think about it, it's really not that bad, it's not that complicated. All I'm really trying to do here is make a T18 look like a T90 on the outside. Now let's throw this case up here on the bench and talk about it a little bit more before we start drilling holes. First off, I bet this looks a little bit better than the last time y'all saw it. Got it all cleaned up, painted, and it looks really good. I like to soak my cases in purple power. I've actually got the shift tower soaking right now. I'll just go to Walmart or Dollar Store, get me one of these big Rubbermaid containers, and then you can buy five gallons of purple power. You can see I'm kind of a fan of it. And that always seems to do the trick. It really cleans these things out nice, gets all the old grease and gunk out. So this surface right here where our counter shafts are at, that's where our transfer case adapter is gonna go. So my output bearing right here is what's gonna locate all this stuff. It's a slip fit, it should just tap in. Now I can set the adapter plate on top of that bearing here. And see that instantly locks it in. And then it's just a matter of getting this clocked 
exactly where it needs to be at. And to measure this, I am just gonna use a scale, just kind of check it from end to end. This is cast, so it's not gonna be perfect, but we wanna get as close as we can get it. And you can see these are the six holes I'm gonna be drilling. So there's two up here, those are the seven sixteenths. And then these four down here should be three eighths, I think. It's not that bad, you really just wanna get it right the first time. There is some clearance things, we'll talk about that more when we start bolting everything together and when we start doing the transfer case stuff. What's nice about the engine side or the bell housing side is the way this little aluminum adapter works, which I'm not gonna put this bearing on just yet because I'll do the transfer case side first and I'll knock that bearing out and you'll know, swap it over. But I get to use the stock mountain holes for the bearing retainer. So you don't have to do anything there. And then like I said, I'll set the bell housing up on top of here this will locate that bell housing, transfer punch, those four holes, and I'll drill and tap this side of the case. Now, unfortunately, my little drill press ain't up to the task to drill the holes in this case, but I've got access to a bigger, more heavy duty, solid drill press I can use to do all this. I would encourage you to do the same. I wouldn't attempt this with a hand drill. When I get back though, all the holes will be drilled and tapped, ready to bolt all this together, and we'll see the first mock-up of this new drivetrain. I'm back with the case. You might notice a few new holes down here, six of them to be exact. I set the adapter up on there, and then I spotted two holes with the drill that was the same size as the holes over here on the adapter. Once I had the two holes marked, I drilled and tapped both of them, and then I bolted the adapter to the transmission. Then I went through and marked the rest of the holes with the drill bit and then drilled and tapped everything, and that had the transfer case adapter on. The bell housing side was a little bit more tricky because with the transfer case, I knew how to clock it because things were gonna be parallel. I had straight edges to go off of. With the bell housing, there wasn't really a good way to figure out if it was perfectly square. I kinda eyeballed it. What I ended up doing is I marked the front two holes right here and the reason I did two in lines instead of caddy corner is so I could measure from the edge to here and see how straight I was, which I ended up getting really close. It was almost perfect. So I drilled and tapped both of them. Then I come back, transfer punched, drilled and tapped both of them. Now that I got all the holes in this case, I can go ahead and put the adapter plate on. I can put the bell housing on. I can put my transfer case on and we'll see the first look at what all this is gonna look like bolted together. First thing I need to do is tap in the old bearing to locate the adapter plate. All right, now that I got that bearing in there, I can put the plate on. You can see the adapter plate came out perfect. You don't have to work hard to get any of these bolts in. Everything lined up just right. I do have to get the correct length bolts for these 7 16 ones because that's kind of an odd size to find. I think these 3 8 ones will work out pretty good. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with these socket heads or I might just go get some hex heads. I've not decided yet. Now I think we're gonna move on to the bell housing. We'll bolt it on. Then we can set the whole thing up on its end and then we can bolt the transfer case onto the back right here. Well, y'all, this is what everything's been building up to. 
Everything's bolted together and adapted and ready to bolt into a Willys Jeep. This is a really exciting step because now it means I can start building the transfer case, rebuilding the transmission, getting all this stuff ready to go. I've actually got a couple cool little surprises for y'all when I start building these out, but you're just gonna have to wait and see what that is. If you're curious what I've been painting all this stuff with, this Krylon Fusion all-in-one, I've been using it here recently. I really like it, it sticks good. Of course, I degrease everything in purple power. I do some good soaks, make sure all the grease is off, break clean the surface before paint, and I've been having really good results with that. Hopefully everything I've said and done in this video makes sense. It's really not that crazy complicated. Some of the parts are kind of hard to find. Some really aren't. Like I said, the transfer case adapter, that's an off the shelf thing. I found a stock Jeep one, but you don't have to if you don't want to. The transmission is just out of an old Ford truck. The bell housing is off an F head engine out of a Willys Jeep. If you're doing the swap for an F head or an L head, I'd go ahead and use the F head bell housing because then you can use a better starter. That's just a little side note for y'all. A good machinist should be able to make up that little aluminum adapter for your bearing retainer. You've got all the pieces you need to take the measurements off of. And then that Jeep J-Truck input shaft, I actually just found that on eBay. Those are pretty easy to come by. And then if you send it over to Moser Engineering with a T90 input shaft, they can take all the measurements, they'll turn it down with a lathe, re it for you, and send it back to you. One thing I've got to do is hunt down all the correct hardware. I'll make sure to make a list of it for y'all. When I went to put the transfer case on the adapter plate, those socket head screws were too tall. I had to go back with the hex head ones, and even with the lock washer and the washer, they still seem to clear. Well, y'all, this is coming right along. Everything's looking really good. I'm excited to build these cases out. And here for long, we'll be putting this thing in the Willys Jeep. I really appreciate y'all watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all next time.